Hey everyone, welcome back to part nine of topic six in our database class. In this video, I'm going to discuss the difference between non-scrollable and scrollable cursors. All right, uh, this leads us to our next topic, which is a discussion of cursors. And in order to really fully understand what's happening with cursors, I need to position this within a discussion of the broader database processing environment. If you remember, we talked about how databases don't live in isolation. Instead, we have all of these other things that are happening, right? So maybe we have web pages that are using the database, right? Maybe we have application programs or mobile apps that are using the database and so on and so on. So these apps, right, these web applications, desktop applications, mobile apps, whatever, when I say that they are using the database, they're making requests to the DBMS for data. So often data is flowing from the database to these programs. So for example, let's say that, I don't know, maybe we're a company like Amazon and we're an online retailer and we want to display product information for a product on a, on a web page. Well, that product information is stored over here in a database. Right, so the web application, maybe it's based on ASP or JSP, will send a request to the database and say, hey, I need these product information for this particular product. The database, the DBMS will then fetch those data out of the database. It'll say, give me those data, the data flow back here. And then they go back here where they can be processed, formatted, displayed on the page. So maybe we're looking at, I don't know, like product reviews or something, right? So. We display a bunch of product reviews out on the web page for the user to view. So request, request, data flow back, and they flow back to the original requester. Now, with that sort of notion in mind, let's return to our discussion of cursors. So a cursor then is a pointer, a reference to a set of rows that is the result from a SQL statement. So if I say something like, hey, I need to display all of the reviews for product number seven, or maybe I need to display like the first 10 reviews for product number seven, the web application will send a request to the DBMS for those records. And then the DBMS will return those as a result set to the application. And the cursor is a pointer into that set of rows. So the idea here is that result sets can be very, very big, right? So if I'm Amazon, maybe I have, I don't know, 5,000 reviews for a particular product. And we don't necessarily want to display all 5,000 reviews simultaneously. And maybe we want to display them, I don't know, like 10 at a time. Okay? So we can use a cursor for this purpose. Okay. Essentially what cursors do is they allow us to work through the results one row at a time. And as you can see, this is something that we can declare if we need to using a select statement. So we can declare a cursor, right? Maybe in this case for large purchases. And I say, give me everything out of the sale table where the purchase price is greater than or equal to 10,000 units. So in our world, we might define this standard as a large purchase. But the point is we're not going to actually fetch all of the data from the database at the time when the SQL select statement is sent to the database, right? We'll start fetching some of the results, but we're not going to get all of them all at once because that would be ridiculous. Who wants to see all 5,000 reviews for a product on one page? It's probably fine if we just fetch like 10 of them at a time. Okay. So this is what cursors are used for. And we have several different types of cursors that we will review. So the first major type is called a forward only cursor. Okay. And these are the simplest and most resource efficient cursors. Okay. Another way of describing forward only cursors is as non scrollable. Essentially, what we have with a forward only cursor is a mechanism where we can scroll through the results one row at a time, starting with the first row and moving toward the last row, but we can only go in that direction. Okay, so if I have, say, a thousand rows in my results, 
with a forward only cursor, I'm going to first see row number one. And then when I advance the cursor, I move to row number two, I can no longer go back to row number one. So I can only move in one direction. It's like time. I can only close in one direction. So forward only. I start at row one. As soon as I advance the cursor to row two, I no longer have access to the previous row. When I advance the cursor to row three, I no longer have access to rows two or one, and so on and so on. Okay. So we fetch the rows one at a time in a serial fashion. And note that with a forward only cursor, we fetch these rows as they are requested. So as I advance the cursor, I get the next row at that moment in time. So this means that say that I'm pulling, I don't know, 5,000 product reviews and I'm pulling them 10 at a time to display on my webpage. So I'll start at row one and then I'll advance to row two and then row three and then row four and then row five and so on until I get to 10. And then if the user clicks on the next page, I'll fetch review number 11 and then review number 12 and then review number 13 and so on. And I'm just getting these one at a time. And the version of those reviews that I'm seeing is the version of the review that is stored in the database at the time of the fetch. So as I advance from say row 12 to 13, I'm getting the review for row number 13 at that moment in time. And I'm not like pre-fetching it or anything like that. And it's whatever it is, is the current version. So that means while I'm busy scrolling, somebody else might be making some changes, right? They could do an insert, an update, or a delete. And uh, as long as I haven't yet reached those rows, I will see those changes once I arrive there with my cursor, okay? So you can think about this as, uh, I don't know, imagine that you're driving from say Fullerton to Irvine and uh, you start off in Fullerton and you can only go in one direction. So in our little scenario, you can only go in one direction. You're cruising along, you can only see forward, but anything that happens on your trip on the way from Fullerton to Irvine, anything that happens that you, is still in front of you, you will see those changes once you arrive. It's the same kind of concept here. Now, these are a very resource efficient, Right, because we just fetch them one at a time. We can only move forward, so we don't need to allocate overhead resources and things like that for scrolling backwards. Now we can contrast forward-only cursors with the scrollable cursors. And of course, the main difference here is simply that in our three different types of scrollable cursors, we can move backwards if necessary. So we can move forward just like we can with a forward-only cursor, but we can also move backwards. Okay, so it would be like if I'm displaying product reviews on my product page and maybe I display the first 10 and then my user says, I want to see 10 more. So I show them the next 10 and then they say, you know what? I want to see those first 10 again. So they can scroll backward right? they can go backwards and see the first 10 rows, the first 10 reviews in this case. So that would be a scrollable cursor. I can move backwards and forwards through the results as necessary. All right. So these scrollable cursors come in three different types, static, key set, and dynamic. And uh, the basic idea with each of these is, can I see, or how much, if changes are made while I'm busy scrolling, do I get to see those changes? Or how many of those changes do I get to see? That's the difference between these three types of scrollable cursors. Okay. Like with our forward only cursor, we said that as we scroll, Right? Any changes that are made to rows that we haven't seen yet, we'll get to see the most recent version of those rows once we finally get there. Right? That's not always the case with scrollable cursors. Right? The, what we get to see as we scroll backwards and forwards will depend on what type of scrollable cursor we use. So let's differentiate between these. So the first type of scrollable cursor is a static cursor. And you can think of this as a snapshot. Okay, so when we open a static cursor for our scrollable cursor, the complete set of results is fetched at that moment in time and stored in a temporary table in the database. Okay. 
So if I want to say, uh, show me all of the reviews for product number 10, maybe there are 5,000 reviews. I'm going to fetch those 5,000 reviews for product 10 and store them in a temporary table. I can then move backwards and forwards through those 5,000 reviews, but because they were fetched at the time of the request, any changes that are made while I'm busy scrolling are not going to be visible to me, right? Because I'm going to be looking at the version of the results that was correct at that moment in time when the cursor was opened. Okay, so it's a snapshot. It's like taking a photo. Right? I can look anywhere I want to on the photo. I can move backwards, move left and right, whatever. But any changes that happen, I'm not going to see that. Okay, so in the background, changes might be happening that are altering the data, but those will not be visible through a static cursor. A key set cursor is a little bit different. Okay? In this case, and this is an interesting idea, we now know what we know about primary keys. So what happens with a key set cursor is rather than fetching the complete set of results when the cursor is opened, what I do is I fetch all of the key values. Okay, so if I have my 5,000 reviews for product number 10, I'll get all of the primary key values for those 5,000 reviews and store those temporarily. And then as I scroll backwards and forwards, that is, as I move from one row to the next, forward or backwards, as I scroll, I use that primary key value to fetch the current version of the data. Okay, so if I'm on, I don't know, review 100, and as I scroll to the next page, someone has changed a review on the next page, I would get to see that change because I'm going to fetch the latest version of the data based on the key value, okay? So that means any updates that are made to any of the rows that appear in my results will be visible to me through the cursor as I'm scrolling, right? Any changes that are made, I'll be able to see them. However, I will not be able to see any inserts or deletes. I'm sorry, I will be able to see deletes because they won't exist. Right. If I try to scroll, remember I have these primary key values. So if I say I need to fetch the next row and that row no longer exists, I will be able to see the delete, but I won't be able to see any new rows that have been inserted. And because I start off when the cursor is opened with the complete set of keys and I never fetch that again. So I get to just have the keys and I'll fetch the current values when I look at the associated row. But if any new rows are inserted, I'm not going to see those through the cursor. And finally, as you might imagine, we have a dynamic cursor. This is by far the most resource intensive type of scrollable cursor. It allows us to scroll backwards and forwards. And all changes that are made to the rows that would comprise the results of our SQL query are visible to us as we scroll. So if I say, show me all of the sales for today, and I open this with a dynamic cursor and I move backwards and forwards through it, any like new sales that are happening or any modifications or deletions that are occurring while I'm scrolling backwards and forwards, I'm going to be able to see those. Those rows will appear as part of my results. Okay. So you can think of this as the opposite of a static cursor because I'll be able to see all inserts, updates, and deletes as I scroll. So in the context of our Amazon review scenario, it would be like if you're looking at reviews and while you're busy looking at reviews, somebody adds a new review. If you continue showing more and more reviews, eventually you'll see it. You'll see that latest review, even though it was added after you started your process of viewing reviews out on the Amazon page.